Log recording. It's 3.35 in the morning, West Coast time. It's still the 22nd of December, 2023. It's still Friday. We were John C. Roseman, California, losing his mental lunch. I was trying to respond to a friend and his issues concerning about a certain star that lost his mental lunch. And I was trying to find some something to either feel sorry for the guy or feel sympathy for the guy, trying to figure out what the hell was going on with this poor actor's mind. And I'm getting tongue-tied left and right. Is my aphasia kicking in? Is something going wrong with my damn mental capacity here? I don't know. It scares the hell out of me. So in January, I cannot afford to miss this appointment with my doctor. i got to point out everything with him. Medical and mental. And I'm not... I hate the damn test. I hate the damn test. I hate going through the medical thing. But as I said before in a lot of my videos, I don't like dealing with the medical establishment, but I got no choice. It's coming up on my 60th in a couple of years, and that scares the crap out of me. But maybe I've, my course is set, and I'm doomed right after 60. But what if, if, I, what if I'm not? I hope to God I, I maybe get to live in it another 10 years, 5 years at best past the 60 point where I don't have to worry about it. I feel like I have to rush my college years and get the uh, certificate before I graduate just so I know I did something in my life. But you know what's been keep haunting my ass as well during those days? The stuff that I've written a long time ago that have never been seen by the public and I'd like to have the stories out there even though they're maybe incomplete. I gotta search for a guy who can proofread the stuff, or someone who proofread it, maybe a group. If it's alright, then edit, then publish the damn thing. I need to learn how to and be able to afford self-publishing. Because if I can get it out there, even on Amazon or dot com, you know, electronic versions, that's cool. And I always wanted to hold my hands on the books. You know, I had a certain format I wanted to hold the books in. Leather tombs. I had this idea of how the paper was going to look like from uh, the old days of parchment looking. A bit burned or a bit golden in the gilded in the edges. I don't care if you got fake gold or not. I don't gild the edges a little bit there. Probably expensive as hell. <coughs> Look as if if the book was worn by weather and by time. You can pull out the book and you smell it and you smell the adventure in it. You can see it on the on the tombs. There's no pictures for people to capture. It's just an emblem of a ship's steering wheel. Blazed out on a silver and gold is, just a, is the title of it. It's the title. And I already got the first book copyrighted. It's everything else I needed to get copyrighted. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of paperwork and it's expensive as hell. I don't know how the hell the copyright office is going to do it, but just at least to get the first book out there. Tell the adventure. Tell the story. Still. Tell them about my characters' lives. Yeah. I wanted to be a writer when I was a young kid. I read a lot of Arthur's out there, and I wanted to be one of them. I wanted to be like them. Every author has its own history, or her history, or a history. The legend is looming larger than life. I wanted to be one of those guys, you know. Get captured by all the descriptions. Get captured by the story. Get captured by the adventures. I should have looked at uh, history in school as stories, you know. Just, But it was just dry-cut it's like eating plain 
toast without anything on it. Dry as hell. And we had to study in school that way. Dry as hell, cookie cutter crap. No adventure, no humanity, no life. That's why I like the stories a hell of a lot better. They had lives in them. And I was living them. And when it's my time, I hope I get to meet them. And maybe have some internal adventures with them. But in this life, I gotta struggle with things. And things, like my history, I gotta deal with. My health history, I gotta deal with. But also, history around me. And that includes a mouth that made a remark and then is trying hard as hell to back it out. He's already been caught in the damn thing. And now he's got to he's gotta do everything else he can. But if he's backing up the other guys who are bullshitting like, like crazy... That I'm losing the, li the sympathy and respect for this guy, except for one little piece of decency I still want to hold on to. This actor, and I probably mentioned it in the earlier video, lost a wife during cancer. Now, I was trying to explain to my, my friend on the East Coast, Mr. Artist in Recovery, <laughs> <coughs> we both been scarred by... No, I can't say being scarred. We had been changed irrevocably by death. We've both felt it. We both acknowledge it. We're both dealing with it. And we're finding ways to cope, live, deal with. He's got... His artistic creations going on. I'm just mouthing off on videos. I haven't written anything else in about 20 years or longer than that. I need to get back to it, though. But I've been focusing more on my scholastics at this point. I mean, this month for December, I've been on vacation. Trying to get myself sorted out. But unfortunately, this hasn't been the vacation I thought it was going to be. Holiday season, you're supposed to be getting into the season. Well, I've been getting into a season, right? Seasons of misery, mourning, grieving, roller coasters left and right, politics happening to drive you crazy a little bit, bug war on a constant basis here. Uh, what else is going on? I need Billy Joel to do a song about this one. We didn't start the fire? No. I just walked right into it and got burned. I was trying to say in the other videos that I've made, when you make dumbass remarks, you're gonna get your ass burned on this shit. Come on, you can't mouth you can't mouth off to a, an elected official and expect not to have repercussions. And this one had repercussions all over it. I I'm understanding more and more what grief can do personality changes to decisions made to things that mattered more on one side and then didn't but on the reverse of it things that sh didn't matter back then matter more I'm trying to get more empathy and sympathy going on because of how death changes things irrevocably in our lives Our processes, our thoughts, our feelings, motivations, memories, triggers, roller coasters. Good Lord. I can make a real list on this one, couldn't I? People mouthing off because they think, I don't know, do they support them or are they just trying to put their name in the paper somewhere? Okay. And as I've been saying before on my own videos over here, sorry, I'm just trying to get my ear itched out here. Uh, I get older, I get more and more crustier in there. I've been trying to say some things about my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own observations, my channel, 
My channel does this. My channel is this. Trying to deal with the loss of family and every concept necessary and, and every subject matter about it and everything related to it. This is what my channel is about. It's a lifeboat over this stuff. It's observations. It's me talking to scrap out because it's my uh, self-help therapy. Uh, I said so before. I mean, I, I said about this one to the uh, therapist about this. This is my self-help. I have to keep this stuff going. Because if I don't, I'm going to be sitting around and going nuts. I think what I miss sometimes is the break times that happen in between classes. I go nuts. It seems like I need to constantly do, and yet I am forcing myself to slow it down more and more because in my growing up, I've been doing, 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 doing. I try to force myself over the last several years, including during after the time Ma died, trying to slow it down a bit, but still get things taken care of. Some things have to be taken care of under priority, so I have to take care of those. I have to schedule it in my head. I have to make priorities. Losing family, surviving on my own, I'm making changes, I'm making priorities, I'm doing things sometimes I normally would not do. Things happen. I still have to deal with the emotional pain, I still have to deal with the trauma. I still have to deal with the PTSD flare-ups I get from time to time. I'll get the nightmares. And sometimes those nightmares will really drive me crazy. I don't wake up screaming. I just wake up. Actually, it's been a couple of times I had woken up screaming. I'm surprised I didn't have the sheriff's department or anybody else pounding on the damn door. I'd seen how PTSD worked on other people, including my brother and my mother, in different formats. And for me, I'm still struggling and dealing with what I've got right now. So, getting back into the sympathy and empathy portion of the mourning and grieving, things do happen, and we're going through them. We're going through them. Now, the actor I kept saying, he may have been, he's probably still a conservative. Maybe he still likes Trump even after losing his wife. And he's trying to make up for it. Uh, a disgraced and expelled, expelled congressperson who lied and cheated his way into Congress for whatever reason he had going got found out got torn, his ass torn apart, and he's saying, I'm going to name names. Have fun. Have fun. I don't feel any sympathy for the guy. No, 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 no. no. Schneider, uh, as I said before, there's that little thing concerning about losing family. See, that's the key. That's the thing. In my videos, I kept trying to emphasize all the damn time. Family's important to me, damn it. I had thought I had nearly lost one particular family that I th thought we were really bonding and maybe some kind of glitch or communication error. Something screwed up that I thought I did. And I felt real lousy about it. I was crying. I was tearing my ass apart on this one here. <clears throat> I even reached out. And just waited. And just felt like I'm a miserable son of a bitch. What the hell did I do? What did I screw up this time? I mean. Ma, what did I do wrong? I get a call out of the blue. I get a text first before I get the call out of the blue. I got reassured. Technical glitches. 
things beyond my control, things I hadn't done out of my control happened. That made me feel better. And then she turned around and asked for help. I'm like, yeah, what are you going to do? What can I do? What can I do? Well, I need this and this and you got it. I felt like I was part of the gang again. It made me feel relieved. I hate losing family. I hate losing friends. I hate losing people that I care about a great deal. I know. They come and go. And when you made a hell of a lot of emotional uh, investment into the relationship, and then they're gone, yeah, you feel that loss. I mean, it sounds cold when I try to put it into accounting terms at this point. But, uh, it's human accounting terms. The more love you pump into a rela- into a situation over here, you think it's going to be growing and growing into a budget, in, into something that is going to be looking good on a portfolio somewhere. I mean, I hate to break it down into accounting terminology here, as I said before. When you have that kind of developed relationship, when you have that kind of developed life, then you, uh, you're reaping the rewards of it. And then suddenly the bottom falls out, the bubble breaks, and all hell breaks loose. It's like worse than feeling the Great Depression of 1929. No, because it's, it's like you take half your heart and ripped it out and, and turned it into the queen's and the other half was still trying to barely keep you alive. That kind of pain. And you're still feeling the pain being chopped up in the in the Cuisinart because that portion of the heart is still working. It's on a constant basis sometimes. The loss is so... is such. There are no adequate words in any language to describe it. Or flowery... Um, speech patterns or whatever kind of phrases that you can think of to describe a heartache. There had been reports I keep hearing about that people have died from broken hearts. Or just literally gave up and just passed away because they wanted to be with their loved ones that badly. I can't tell you how many times I felt that way about my own. But the thing of it is, the difference is that I know, for me personally, is I've been there and done it, and I don't like to go through the damn process. Thank you very much. It scares the hell out of me. Four years old, open heart surgery. You're not supposed to go through that kind of shit unless you were born with, with bad plumbing. And at the age of four years old, they had to fix the damn thing. I died three times and coming back to life three times. This changes a person entirely, okay? I know I tried to explain it to a, a few people out there, but they got to understand something. Adult is one thing when you have that kind of perspective. But when you're a kid, when you're a kid, that sticks with you. So, yeah, tell me something about death I don't know about. Tell me about mourning and grieving I don't know about. Doesn't make me an expert. I am an ex- expert about hiding from the damn thing most of my life until I lost my family. Ma back in 2013. Dave back in 2018. I lost a beloved pet, but also lost a family member who was also a friend and a surrogate mother. You know, these things pile on. There are people out there who deal with the pile-ons. And they're feeling miserable as hell. And they're going to the chat areas of social media to get their pain out. And it's real. It's real. So yeah, I my heart grieves in sympathy, in sympathy for these people. I bleed for them. I know that sometimes it gets so damn hard when the roller coaster feelings come in. 
they come in waves except for me it's on dips and turns and corkscrews and stuff like that throw me for a loop it's like worse than magic mountain and I hated going to magic mountain I couldn't deal with the roller coasters out there. There's no way in hell I'd be killing myself with those damn things. Screw it. I'm not a thrill seeker. Screw, I keep my feet on the ground. I don't like it in the air. It just makes me sick to my stomach. This is important for me to talk about. This is important for me to, to even say this thing concerning about the holiday season because the holiday season is insane. So I have to deal, I have to cope, I have to function. And if people don't understand it, well, maybe they don't have the perspective or choose not to have the perspective. I know for a long time, I chose to hide from it. Not any longer. Not any longer. So I'm going to deal with what I got, and I hope my friends will do as well. If I'm going to have a happy Merry Christmas, I'll just have a somber one. At least I know what the holiday means to me. It still is family, and I try to celebrate it with traditions as much as I can. I try to celebrate it as best as I can.